Hello guys. I am Vishal from Edureka and I welcome you all to yet another session on AWS. In today's session we would be understanding what AWS CloudFront is. But before we do go ahead and understand what CloudFront exactly is, let's start by taking a look at today's agenda first. First and foremost, I would be talking about what AWS exactly is. We'd also understand why do we need AWS CloudFront and what it is exactly. Then I would talk about how content gets delivered using Amazon CloudFront and what are its applications. Finally, I would finish things off with the demo part where I would be talking about AWS CloudFront distributions. Having said that, let's not waste any time and jump into the first topic of discussion that is what is AWS? Well, AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, which is a leading cloud service provider in the market. And it has the highest market share when you talk about any cloud service provider. Now what Amazon Web Services does is it provides you with 70 plus services and these services are constantly growing. To name some of these services, we have something called as your computation services, your storage services, your database services, and all these services are made available to you through cloud. That means you can rent all these services and pay only for the services that you use and only for the time duration you use these services for. If you want to know more about how AWS works exactly, I would suggest that you go through the videos that we have on YouTube. We have quite a few videos on YouTube which talk about AWS in particular. All you have to do is you have to go to our YouTube channel and type Edureka AWS and you'd be having all the videos that are related to AWS. But that is not the discussion for today. We are here to discuss what CloudFront is and I would like to stick to that. So coming back to CloudFront, when you talk about AWS, you have some services. Now what AWS does is it offers you various infrastructure as services and even platform as services. Now these services are made available to you in the form of infrastructures or platforms where you can actually go ahead and host applications or websites. So when you do go ahead and host these applications online, what your cloud provider has to worry about is the way data is fetched because if you have a website online, now that website would be visited by quite a few people and they would be requesting particular content or data, right? So in that case, that data has to be made available to your customers. So how does it happen exactly and how does AWS make it happen? To understand that, consider this scenario. Suppose you are a particular user and you're trying to visit a particular website and imagine that that website is based somewhere at a very far location. Suppose you're based somewhere in USA and that website, its server actually hosts or is based in Australia. Now in that case, when you make a request for a particular object or particular image or maybe content, now your request is sent to the server that is in Australia and then it gets delivered to you. And in this process too, there are quite a few interrelated networks that deal which you are not aware about. The content directly gets delivered to you and you have a feeling where you feel that you type in a particular URL and the content is directly made available to you. But that is not how it works. Quite a few other things happen in the interim. And due to that, what happens is the data that gets delivered to you, it does not get delivered to you very quickly. Why is that? Because you'd be sending in a request, it would go to the original server, and from there the content is delivered to you. Now, if you are based in USA, the situation would be convenient if the data is delivered to you from somewhere close by. Now when you talk about a traditional system where you are sending a request to somewhere in Australia, this is what happens. Your data or your request is sent to the server based in Australia and then it processes that request and that data is made available to you which gets delivered to you. But if you have something like CloudFront, what it does is it sets in an intermediate point where your data actually gets cached first and this cache data is made available to you on your request. That means the delivery happens faster and you save a lot of time. So how does AWS CloudFront exactly do it? Let's try to understand that. Well, when you talk about AWS CloudFront, what it does is first and foremost, it speeds up the distribution process and you can avail any kind of content, whether it's static or dynamic, and it is made available to you quickly. What CloudFront does is it focuses on these three points. One is your routing, two is your edge locations, and three is the way the content is made available to you. Let's try to understand these one by one. When you talk about routing, I just mentioned that the data gets delivered to you through a series of networks. So what CloudFront does is it ensures that there are quite a few edge locations that are located close to you. 
and the data that you want to access it gets cached so that it can be delivered to you quickly and that is why the data that is being delivered to you is more available than in any other possible case so what happens exactly and how does this content gets delivered to you let's try to understand this with the help of this diagram suppose you are a user so basically what you would do is you would send in a request that needs to reach a particular server now in this case what happens is first your request it goes to an edge location and from there to your server to understand this too you have to understand two scenarios first and foremost suppose you are based in usa and you want to fetch a particular data that is based in australia you would be sending in a request but what aws does is instead of sending that request directly to your server which is based in australia maybe it has these interim edge locations which are closer to you so the request it goes to the edge location first and it checks whether the data that you are requesting is already cached there or not if it is not cached then the request is sent to your original server and from there the data is delivered to the edge location and from there it comes to you now you might wonder as in this is a very complex process and if it is taking these many steps how is it getting delivered to me quicker than in normal situation i'll think of it from this perspective if you do send in this request directly to the main server again the data would flow through some network and then it would be delivered to you instead what happens here is at your edge location the data gets cached so if you request it again it would be delivered to you quicker if it is requested by anyone else it would be delivered to them quicker plus how edge locations work is when you do send in this request and when the edge location fetches this data from your so called original server in that case too when the first byte it arrives at your edge location it directly gets delivered to you and how does this content exactly get stored here well first and foremost what happens is what your edge location has is it has some regional cache as well now this cache would basically hold all the content that is requested more frequently in your region suppose a website has some n number of content and out of it some content is kind of requested a lot in a particular region so surrounding that region the closest edge location would have a regional cache which would hold all the content that is more relevant for those users so that it can be frequently delivered to these users and can be made available to them quickly in case if this data gets outdated and it is no longer being requested then this data can be replaced with something else that is requested more frequently so this is how cloud front work what it does is it creates a distribution and you have some edge locations through which you can actually request that data faster so what are the applications that cloud front has to offer to you now i won't say applications instead i would say some of the benefits of using cloud front let's try to understand those one by one first and foremost what it does is it accelerates your static website content delivery we just discussed that that means if you are requesting a particular image or something like that it gets delivered to you quicker why because it is cached at your edge location and you do not have to worry about any latency issues next what it does is it provides you various static and even dynamic content suppose you need some video or a live session or something like that even that gets delivered to you quickly i just mentioned that when you request a particular thing when the first byte it arrives at your edge location your cloud front starts streaming that to you or start delivering that to you same happens with your live streaming videos as well you would be getting that streams instantly without any latency whatsoever encryption now when you do access this content what aws cloud front does is it lets you have this so called domain where you put in https and you get secured data so you already have one layer of security but it also lets you add another layer of security by giving you something called as encryption by encrypting your data or by using your key value pairs which is the same you are actually ensuring that your data is more secured and it can be accessed privately as well customization at the edge now what do i mean by this now there is some content that needs to be delivered to the user or to the end user if the customization it happens at the server again it might be time consuming and there are quite a few drawbacks of it say for example i need a particular content and it needs to be processed or customized at the very last moment so these things can be done at the edge location as well thus helping you save time money and various other factors as well and finally what it does is it uses something called as lambda edge which again 
lets you deal with various customizations and lets you serve your content privately. So these were some of the applications or uses of CloudFront. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch into my AWS console and I'm going to talk about AWS CloudFront distributions and how can you go ahead and create one. So stay tuned and let me quickly switch into the console first. So yes guys what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've logged into my AWS console. Now for people who are completely new to AWS what you can do is you can actually go ahead and create a free tier account. You have to visit AWS website and search for free tier you would get this option. Just create an account they would ask you for your credit or debit card details probably but they won't charge you. A minimal amount is charged and that is reverted back to your account that is for verification purpose. And after that what AWS does is it offers you certain services which are made available to you for free for one complete year. That is as long as you stay in the limits or the specified limits which AWS has set. So those limits are more than enough to practice or to learn AWS. So if you want to do go ahead and get a proper hands on on various AWS services. I would suggest that you do visit their website and create this free tier account. Once you do have that account you have all these services that are made available to you. As I just mentioned there are 70 plus services and these are the services that are there which you can actually go ahead and use for different purposes. Our focus today however is creating a cloud front distribution which we just discussed in the so called theory part. I would be repeating few topics here too while we do go ahead and create our cloud front distribution. Now as I've already mentioned we want to fetch data or fetch a particular object and if that is placed at a particular edge location that would be made available to me. So what we are doing here is imagine that our data is placed at a particular original server. In our case let's consider it as an S3 bucket. Now S3 is nothing but a storage service with AWS that is simple storage service rather that is SSS and that is why we call it S3. So what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and create an S3 bucket in that we would be putting in certain objects and we would be accessing that by using our cloud run distribution. So let's just go ahead and create a bucket first. You can see we have S3 in my recently used services. You can just type S3 here and that would be made available to you. You can click on it and your simple storage service opens. You would be required to go ahead and create a bucket. This is how you do it. You click on create and you give it some name say maybe bucket use small letters bucket for AWS demo maybe and I would give in some number 000. I say next 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 I need a basic bucket so I won't be putting in any details. Do we have a bucket here? Ah, There you go. We have a bucket here and in this bucket what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some content that we can actually request for. So let's just go ahead and create an HTML file and put in maybe an image or something. So I have a folder here in that folder. I have a logo of Edureka. I would be using that logo and I would want to go ahead and create an HTML file which I can refer. So I would open my notepad and I would write a simple HTML code. I won't get into the details of how to write an HTML code. I assume that you all know it. If not you can use this code. So let's create a head file basically or a head tag rather. Let's say demo tag maybe and I close this head tag. I need some body in here right so let's say let the body we say welcome to Edureka and I end the body here and I save this file. I say save as where do I want to save it and save it here and I would save it as say maybe index dot html I say save it probably got saved somewhere else let me just copy it and paste it here I've done that this is the file now we have these files let's upload it to our s3 bucket come here I say upload I want to add files so add files where do I go I go to the F folder I go to demo and I select these two files and I say upload. There you go my files are here and I say upload small files. So should not take a long time 50% successful 100% successful. There you go you have these two files. Now we have our S3 bucket and we have two files. This is our origin server. Now I need to create a distribution and use it. 
to do that, I would click on services and come here and I would search for CloudFront. There you go. And I say create a distribution. So I click on this icon. Now you have two options. First one is something that lets you have your static data moved in or moved out. Or if you want to live stream your data, you should go for this option, but that is not the case. We would be sticking to this thing. I say get started. I need to enter in a domain name. So it gives me suggestions and this is the first one which I just created original path is something that you can give in for the folders from where you want to access the data but mine directly resides in the bucket there are no extra folders so I don't need to enter anything original ID this is what I have here basically I can use this or I can just go ahead and change the name if I want to but I would let it stay the way it is restrict bucket access yes I want to keep it private so I say restrict and I create a new identity. And there you go. I have a new user created here. Apart from that, grant read permissions on bucket. Yes, update my bucket policy accordingly is what I would say. Then I would scroll down customer headers and all. I don't need to put in these details. How do I want my data to be accessed? The protocol policy. I would say redirect HTTP to HTTPS so that it is secured. If I scroll down, I have some other options as well. Cast HTTP methods and all those things. Do I need to change these? Object caching, can I customize it? Yes, I can, but again, I would be using the by default one. If you want to, you can customize it. Smooth streaming, no. These are some of the things that you need to focus on. If you have some streaming data, you can put in details accordingly, but we are not doing that. What is the price class that you want to choose? You have some options here which you can pick from. I would be going for the default one. And then I just scroll down and I say, create a distribution. So your distribution is getting created now. And this process might take a longer while if you click on this thing, you would realize that it is in progress and it takes somewhere around 10 to 12 minutes for this distribution to get created. So meanwhile, I'm going to pause this session and I would come back with the remaining part once this distribution is completed. So bear with me for that while. So there you go. The distribution has been deployed. The status is deployed here. So we can actually go ahead and use this thing. Now we have a domain name here which I can use and I can just enter it here and we would be redirected to the page. And what happens here is you would be actually given access to this page through the edge location. That means you're not going to the server. Instead, the data is being cached to you from your distribution or your edge location rather. So you enter this website and you hit the enter button. There's an error. It shouldn't have been. Oh, I know what just happened. When you do go ahead and create your so-called distribution, in that you actually have an option of selecting a by default file, which I did not. So I'll have to give in an extension here saying slash index.html. And if I hit the enter button now, it should redirect you to the demo tag, which says welcome to Edureka, right? So this was the HTML file that we created. And we also had a PNG file which we wanted to access. The name was logo.png. Okay, this is funny. This should not happen. Why is this happening? Let's take a look at it. Whether we have that file there because if it was there, we should be able to access it. And what was my bucket? This was the one. Oh, this has happened. When I uploaded that file, it got saved with this extension .png.png. So if I come here and I type .png here, there you go. You have that object delivered to you through your so called distribution. So, yeah, this was about CloudFront. I hope you all had something new to learn and understand. If you do have any queries, put those queries in the chat box below, and we would be more than happy to get back to you with the answers as soon as possible. As far as this session goes, I would be resting it here. Thank you. Bye bye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!